Hello overclockers, my name's Bryony and in this video I'm going to be taking a closer look at a brand new case from Fantex. It's the P200A DRGB. We're going to take a look at the case and then I'm also going to be building a PC in it also. It's kind of a mid-tier gaming PC called the Magnetite and it's actually a pre-built system you can buy on the overclockers website. The graphics card we're going to be using is the AMD Radeon 6700 XT. I've got an ITX motherboard because this case is a smaller compact size and it does only take ITX size motherboards. There's a Ryzen 5 5600X CPU, there's also a Colink power supply, 16 gigabytes of memory, a one terabyte hard drive and also a 500 gigabyte Gen 4 NVMe drive also. So before we take a closer look at the case let's just take all of these components off and we'll have a look at this beautiful Fantex case. So here's the P200A and here is also my favourite part about getting new components. Oh yeah, that was a good peel. That was definitely a good peel. Before I move on and do a build in this case, I just wanted to show you some of the great features it has to offer. So this is the RGB version. It's got this tempered glass side panel on the front here that comes off super, super easily. It also comes equipped with two RGB fans in the front, which are digitally addressable. The performance version of the case comes with a plain panel uh, and you've also got non-RGB fans in the front as well. The benefit of that one is it is only $44.99, so it's ideal for more budget bills. This one comes in at $64.99. So despite the P200A being a more compact chassis, it's still got space for loads of full-size hardware. You've got the ITX motherboard, of course, but you can fit a full-size power supply in the roof of the case. You've got space for a gigantic triple slot graphics card, and I'm actually gonna be showing off the vertical mounting functionality of this case. So I'm gonna vertically mount our 6700 XT and just see how that looks. I bet it's gonna look great. Um, and also you've got loads of space for lots of cooling and uh, storage as well so you can fit a radiator sort of in the back here because there's some really nice mesh on the back so the same mesh that's on the front of the case is kind of fine mesh which stops the dust coming in uh, but also ensures plenty of airflow as well you've got that panel there so you can install a radiator kind of on the back of the case, or you can store a radiator in the front of the case. I'm actually gonna be using the stock cooler with our CPU, because it's kind of a mid-tier, more budget build, I guess. So we wanna make the most of putting all that money into the graphics card and CPU, and we're kind of saving on other aspects, such as the motherboard and the cooler. But if you wanna do it, this case can pretty much handle it. You've got lots of space for SSDs, uh, you can even put in three and a half inch hard drives as well. Um, and I think despite its small size, you've got loads of different options depending what you want to do. And that's something that Fantex always does really, really well. Uh, they make sure that their cases are really easy to build in and you've got lots of options. The first step when I'm doing any PC build is that I like to prep the case and get everything ready to start off with. So I'm going to flip this baby around. I'm going to pull here, just like it says. That side panel comes off so easy. And I'm also gonna grab my SSD. So we've got that one terabyte SSD and I'm also gonna need a screwdriver as well. So the back of this case, it looks like you've actually got a really kind of decent amount of room to do cable management. They've got this channel here that runs down. You've got all the cables for the front IO are kind of neat, ready to go. You've got some Velcro ties up the top here and also this kind of divot where the power supply is gonna go on the other side. So there's plenty of space to root cables that you might wanna put back here to make the front of the case look a bit more neat. So the first step, I'm gonna install the SSD. So Fantex in there, really smart, kind of clever design. They've made this SSD panel that comes off. So you can install the SSD out the case. That means you're not kind of fiddling around, trying to get a screw in really awkwardly. You can take it out of the case and do it on the desk. It just makes things so much easier. As with every PC case, you get an accessory kit. This one I'm expecting to be quite basic because this is more of a budget case, but also Fantex tends to be reasonably generous as well. Um, so that is gonna be the vertical GPU mounting bracket. I might actually have to look at the instructions for that one. Um, and then we've also got the bag with our screws. 
and there's a few cable ties in there as well which might come in handy they yeah, are pretty basic as expect oh instruction manual very important um as as i kind of expected it's quite basic but you've also got everything you need as well so that's ideal so i'll, I'll see if i can get this uh, ssd open there it is oh that's a really nice ssd actually What exactly is it? It's the T-Force Vulcan G gaming SSD. Gaming with a man with a gun on it. All right, let's get this uh, little wire off of here. As you can see, there's space for two SSDs on there. And I think you've actually got space for a further two SSDs on here also. So that's four SSDs in total. There we go one ssd and that's literally all the preparation i'm going to do in this case normally this is also the stage where i'd install uh, any extra fans or um just kind of get everything ready in the case i like to just prep it ready before i put the motherboard in uh, it's easier to do it while everything's out of the way doesn't that look nice okay so the next step is that we're gonna get everything we'll get you like nice and zoomed in nice and close up so i can show you installing the cp into the motherboard installing the memory and also putting on the cooler as well okay so you can tell things are getting serious because i put my hair up um, but this is the part where we're gonna uh, like i said install the cpu it's motherboard etc so this motherboard is a b550 so i've actually already updated the bios so it works with our ryzen 5000 cpu that's what i spent my morning doing it didn't go as smoothly as anticipated but it's all ready now and it should work as soon as i've installed it so we'll get it out of the box it's so cute and small this is actually my first ITX build. I'm used to doing a uh, like full sized, you know, big mid tower size case, ATX motherboard. Um, but I do like it actually. It has all the functionality you need really. There's no reason that you'd need a big size motherboard for most uses. So the first step is that I'm gonna be getting the CPU installed. This is uh, like the bracket for the cooler that came with the motherboard. It was already screwed in, but because I've already updated the BIOS, um, I, I took off the brackets anyway, so it's ready for the stock cooler. There's our CPU. So with CPUs, um, AMD or Intel, AMD is a little bit different because you've got all of these pins that you've got to be oh so careful with. You want to line up the triangle. So the CPU has a uh, gold triangle on it. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but it's just down the bottom corner there. And then the motherboard has a triangle on the socket uh, to just show you which orientation to put the CPU. So I'm going to line those two up. You lift up the little arm, which kind of unlocks the socket. And then you very, very carefully place all those tiny pins into the tiny holes. And then once you've definitely got it in place and it's definitely the right way around, you can then push this arm down and clip that into place. CPU is installed. Now the CPU is installed, the next step is to install the memory. So we've got 16 gigabytes here, it's HyperX memory, and it is running at a speed of 3,600 megahertz. So nice and fast, which is perfect to pair with a Ryzen CPU. Why is opening packaging always a mystery to me? Just give me the RAM. There we go. So when you're installing memory, you want to make sure that it's lined up correctly. If you're using a motherboard like that's created any time in the past like four or five years, it's gonna be DDR4. So make sure you've got DDR4 memory. Uh, and then also make sure that the slots are lined up on the motherboard. So you've got a short slot and a long slot. And on the RAM, you can see you've got a short, uh, I don't know, <laughs> a piece of PCB and a long piece. And you've got that notch in the middle. So you wanna make sure they line up, make sure the clips on the motherboard are open, and then you just simply install it. And you kind of push it down. It's harder than you'd expect to have to push it with a nice firm click. 
And if you can, you always wanna try and install your memory before you install the cooler. Um, just because sometimes once you've got the cooler in place, you won't actually be able to get to that memory slot anymore. And I think that is the case with this motherboard because it's so compact. There we go, memory's in. So finally, the next step is to get on and install the CPU cooler. So thankfully, our cooler comes with pre-applied thermal paste, and when they apply thermal paste, they do it really, really nicely. So I'm not gonna bother to kind of redo that, I'm just gonna install the, uh, the cooler straight onto the motherboard. Uh, otherwise, you'd wanna, this is where you'd um, put your thermal paste on. Make sure I've got it the right way around. You've got four screws, so I line up the four screws with the four holes, which are on the bracket, which is on the back of the motherboard. And you wanna tighten them evenly, so cross tighten them. So as I'm screwing them into place, I'm counting how many times I'm rotating it, and then making sure that I do that on each side. Because if you have too much pressure on one side, you're putting unnecessary strain on your motherboard, unnecessary strain on the cooler, unnecessary strain on your CPU. So it's best to just cross tighten and also not over tighten. You're not trying to put the CPU cooler through the motherboard. You just want it to hold into place and have enough pressure uh, that the thermal paste is, is squished nicely up to these two surfaces and the heat can get across there. Okay, that's that in place. And finally, the final step is to plug in the cable for the CPU fan. Easy peasy. That's the motherboard prepped. Uh, so now it's time to install that into our lovely P200A case. I've now got the P200A back on the desk and I'm gonna be installing the motherboard. So before I do that, the all important step, do not forget this. I'm gonna put the IO shield in the back of the case. like two years later <laughs> we finally got that bad boy installed uh, that was way more awkward than it should have been no fault of the case it's just my own fault um so i've noticed as well when i prepped the case i didn't actually uh change this kind of like panel at the back here because in order to in vertically install the gpu you need to take a panel out of the back of the case here and you've got this like um uh, the PCIe kind of mounting bracket, you need to rotate it and put it vertically. I actually want to do that now, um, just for the simple fact that once the motherboard's in there, it'll just be more awkward to do it. So I'm just gonna put that hit here and just check that's okay on camera. We're all good, right, so let's get going. There's one screw at the top. That's so smart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've only turned it around about six times. It's dizzy, look at it, it's, all, it's gonna fall over now. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, this, I don't actually know which way around this is meant to go. Where is the instruction manual? <laughs> we did it. We did it. That. It took a manual, it took like three hours, and it took the help of Simon as well. Videographer and master, puzzle, puzzle master. I actually made this case look really badly designed then, but it's, if you look at the manual and you have more than two brain cells to rub together, it's actually really simple <laughs> and it slots together really nicely. Where's the other? Ah, oh, there it is. There we go. Right, so you've now got space there for a triple slot graphics card to be vertically mounted. It only took three hours to do. <laughs> So back to what I was doing before. I think that, that should be in shot. Right, back to what I was doing before. We're gonna install the motherboard into the case. I've noticed as well, which I didn't realize with the ITX motherboard, there's only four screws you've got installed, which I think is just brilliant. 
I don't know why I've not done an ITX build before. I think my next build at home will have to be an ITX build. Just so I don't have to fiddle with so many screws. There we have it, that's the end of the video. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so the next step is to install the power supply. So it goes in the top of the case here, which I think is really smart because you've got all this cooling down the bottom then going straight to your GPU, which is wonderful. If you're gonna horizontally mount it, it's literally gonna be sat right on the bottom and the intake fans are gonna be pulling straight through this dust filter the here and getting lots of fresh air. So it's a really smart design for airflow. So I'm just gonna grab my power supply. We've got this Co-Link 600 watt modular power supply. It's bronze rated, so it's great. It's, a, it's also got a three year warranty. So if you're doing a budget build, it's a really good option because the price point on this is exceptional. <laughs> well, there's bubble wrap on it. I can't resist with bubble wrap. You have to pop it, don't you? <laughs> Sorry, I won't turn this into an ASMR video. There we go, look at those lovely black cables as well. Okay, so with a modular power supply, the first step is that you wanna just prep it, make sure you've got all the cables plugged in that you think you're gonna need for the build. So this one, uh, it does have, it is like semi, it's modular, but kind of semi-modular, but I mean, you, you never, not going to need these so that's the 8 pin for the cpu you've got the 24 pin for the motherboard we've also got um our graphics card will need power i'm just going to check to see how many eight pins right it's an eight pin and a six pin I've installed the motherboard and I forgot to put in the M.2 drive. <laughs> it's okay, I can still get to it. <laughs> the cooler's not in the way. Rejoice. Okay, right, we'll do the power supply first and then I'll do that. Oh dear. This is because I've, I've not built a PC in literally a year. More than a year. Right, so we need that. That's to power our SSD, say to power. We do not need Molex, nasty Molex. If this case has Molex on it, I, I highly doubt actually. Being a Fantex case, they would never do that. And then finally, this is our eight pin. There it is, and then there's the six pin. That's to power the graphics card. So I've got that ready. I'm now gonna install this because I, I can't, cannot believe I completely forgot. But normally I do this before I put the motherboard in the case. Because I installed that SSD, it kind of, because it threw me off. I already, I already ticked storage off the list of things to do in my brain. M.2 NVMe drive is Gen 4, super, super fast. Very nice, right, so this uh, motherboard looks like it has a little cover on it. So I'm just gonna take that cover off and then get this M.2 drive in. Um, I won't make you watch me do this, so we'll probably just cut that. So let's get this baby installed. Peel off the uh, plastic from the heat shield. Make sure it's the right way around. Now's the tough bit. Like a contortionist. Like who gave this woman a job at a tech company? <laughs> or she does is drop screws into places that are impossible <laughs> to get them out of. I've got it again. Oh dear. 
Yeah. All those games as operation as a kid, it paid off. Oh, oh. Okay, it's going in that time. I can never be a surgeon, could I? <laughs> I'd just slip and like, oh dear. I've not got the delicate touch required. At least I remembered now. Can you imagine if you went to install the OS on it and I was like, wait, where's that M.2 drive? <laughs> I can't see it in the BIOS. <laughs> Cause it's still inside the box. Boom. Okay, so now I've installed that M.2 NVMe drive that I forgot about earlier, uh, we can finally get the power supply inside the case. So I'm gonna find my four power supply screws. Yeah, okay. Another little neat Fantex feature is that they've got this uh, frame that comes off the back here. So you can once again install the screws onto the kind of component, this power supply, outside of the case. Why do they not line up? God, I'm so thick today. The frame's like upside <laughs> Oh dear. I'm literally thinking, how have Coling manufactured a power supply that's the wrong size? <laughs> it's not it's not the power supply, it's me. I'm trying to think which way to install the power supply in this case. There's always this argument that people like to have of is it better to install it so you know, if it's at the roof, there's nowhere for it to get air in, but then at least it's not sucking in the hot air from down here. If I install it this way, the fan's at the bottom, so it's got airflow from the case, but it's also hot air. But I reckon some air's gotta be better than no air, so I'm gonna go with the fan facing down. It's also got co-link nice, nicely there. I mean, the other side's fine as well, but it's not quite as, attractive so I'm gonna go for this way I'm gonna this is where now the bracket only goes one way up after I've spent the time debating it look at that that is a great like it's a budget case but that is such a nice feature to have because trying to hold a power supply against gravity and install it in this case would be so awkward. They're not, they're not that heavy, but they're just, they're just awkward. They're big, there's cables hanging off of them. That just makes them so much better. And this, this is thumb screws on the back up here. I'm taking a screwdriver too, actually, I shouldn't be. Right, that's the power supply installed. We've now got an octopus full of cables. Um, so I'm gonna, before I plug those in, I'm actually gonna get my um, SATA data connected up. Let's get that SSD plugged in before I forget its existence. So uh, when you're plugging in uh, SSDs or hard drives, they've got like this L-shaped connection. Uh, so you just wanna line that up with the L-shape that's on the storage device. It's really uh, quite simple. If you're putting them in the wrong way around, you'll soon realize. And then they clip. And if you wanna take them out again, you just have to make sure you press the, uh, the little metal clip down to release them. Uh, so I'm gonna thread this through here. Actually, let me just have a look on the motherboard where the SATA connectors are, because this being an ITX motherboard, I bet they're not in the, uh... oh, they are. They're where I expected them to be. Just to the right here. Sometimes motherboard manufacturers do like to move things around. There we go, same thing again. Look for the L shape and uh, just clip it in the right way up. I'll plug that into, um, I'm not sure what that is actually. The motherboard manual would say, um, motherboards 
some of them will share SATA connectors like with the M.2 drive. Um, so you do wanna check in the manual just to make sure that your both storage devices are gonna be running at full speed. If I notice any issues, um, I, will, I will check that later, but for now, at least I know that it's plugged in. So um, as, as we're on the uh, plugging the storage device in, I'm also gonna do the SATA power. This is probably like the most boring part, it's just plugging everything in. Um, so I'm gonna thread this SATA power connector through here. Once again, it's a little L shape, so you just need to line those up, push it in, and you'll know when it's in, because it kind of does that satisfying click. Um, so that's that one in. I'm actually gonna pull that all the way through to make cable management at the end that little bit easier. With the power supply being on the front of the case, it's gonna, it is gonna make cable management slightly harder, I think. That's the one downside to it. So I'll flip it back around. Hopefully you can kind of see what's going on in here. So next up, I'm gonna plug in the CPU connector. Uh, so it's an eight pin connector. And on this ITX motherboard, there it is. Just on the left hand side. There you go, nice satisfying click. And then the 24 pin. So you wanna line it up. You've got the little clip on the side, line that up with the clip that's on the motherboard. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I've definitely found a new struggle for ITX motherboards. Everything's so much harder to get in. It's so, so much more compact, but we've got the HDA, HD audio connector in. We've got the power switch plugs in. We've got the USB three connected up and we've also got the two fans plugged in now as well. So that's all done and we'll move on to the next bit. Okay, so that's everything. CP power in, 24 pin in, the SSD is connected up. So finally, the final step is to install the graphics card. So I'm just gonna grab it. I think AMD did a really good job with the stock coolers on this generation. That is just so nice. I've not really had much time. I've spent a bit of time with the Nvidia, new Nvidia uh, 30 series, but not with these new AMD graphics cards. I think they're actually probably a tad rarer, to be honest. Uh, but that's gonna be vertically mounted as well, so it's gonna look stunning in this case. Kind of got like a black and silver thing going on with the ASRock motherboard as well. Um, so I think with this GPU, um, obviously because it's being vertically mounted, there is probably an extra bracket, which is what I think this little thing here is. I'm actually just gonna check in the case manual just to check how that fits in. And we'll also need There you go, I found it. A riser cable as well. So if you're gonna vertically mount your graphics card you're always gonna need a riser cable. We have, of course, Fantex case, Fantex riser cable. So that's what I'm gonna be using uh, to connect the graphics card up once it's vertically mounted. But like I said, I'm just gonna check the manual and uh, see how I install this bracket. If it, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but I just wanna double check. Okay, that's definitely what this is for. I've now read the manual. I'm not gonna make the same mistake as if I was trying to switch the thing around on the back. So I'll quickly get the graphics card out of the way. Ooh, so many cable ties. I'm sure those will come in handy when we're doing the cable management. So it's got two thumb screws on it and it basically installs into the bottom of the case here and it gives like a bit of extra support to the graphics card. 
Um, so I'm gonna try find the hole to install this. And it said in the manual that it's got two mounting positions. There's mounting position A or mounting position B. It said A is better for more airflow and also allows for triple slot cards. So I'm gonna go for mounting position A, which is the one that's a bit further back. That's so easy with the thumb screws. And this is the PCIe riser cable. Quite nice that is. So you've got this end here, which is gonna screw onto this plate, and then this end, it goes straight into the motherboard. It's got a cover on it. That's in there. Make sure it's clipped in okay. I hate doing this bit with the riser cables. You have to kind of bend them awkwardly to get them back so I can screw that in there. That's that's done it quite easily actually. If I have a little dig around in here, I should be able to find some screws. There we go. That was quite a neat and easy installation as uh, kind of vertical mounting brackets go and uh, riser cables and things. So the final step now is that I just need to remove these uh, little like PCIe covers at the back here. They are thumb screws, but they're in there quite tight. make sure that CPE cable is out the way. magical click that means it's in there right so I've got that in that just looks so good I mean it look much better when those cables are managed but that was a really nice looking graphics card who says you need RGB hey to have a nice build I mean we're going to put RGB in this build anyway but doesn't technically need it So now just screwing those thumb screws back in to secure the GPU into place. You've got the eight pin connector and the six pin connector. So let's just get those in actually. I'm getting, I'm get, totally getting ahead of myself. I just want to see this PC turned on. There we go. Done it. Right, let's get a power lead and we'll get it turned on and uh, see if it boots. Okay, it's now the moment of truth. I've got the PC plugged into a display. I'm gonna press the power button for the first time and fingers crossed it's gonna boot. Oh. Okay, the fans are lit up, the graphics cards lit up. And the monitor is turned on, so that's great news. It looks like it's just asking for a boot device, so that shows me that all the components are plugged in correctly, everything's working as it should. So I'm gonna check that my RAM and everything's installed in the BIOS. I'm also then gonna install Windows as well. But just before I do that, I need to manage these cables because it's looking a little bit like an octopus at the moment. So that's the next step. We'll get that um, Windows uh, OS installed, and then I'm also gonna benchmark some games because I just wanna see how well this Magnetite PC can play the latest titles.
So here is the completed magnetite build in the Fantex P200A case. I must say that the cable management was actually really, really easy. Cable management often isn't that fun, but in this case, I found it very satisfying. Fantex have done a great job of making sure there's plenty of space behind the motherboard tray, and also all the slots to root cables are in the perfect spot. So you can get it looking really neat, and I must say I'm extremely proud of how this PC came out. I haven't built a PC in a little while, but it is looking really, really nice. As you can see, I've also installed the LED strips. So these are the Fantex digitally addressable LED strips, which means that they connect up to the integrated RGB controller in this case. So they synchronize with the included fans. And that is great for a more budget case because it means you don't have to invest an expensive motherboard with an RGB header. It's all done in the case itself. You simply press the button on the front of the case and you can scroll through loads of different beautiful effects. The one I've got here is probably my favorite. The red and blue but there's loads to choose from and you don't have to worry about any complicated software that often can be a little bit annoying anyway. The PC system that I've built here is actually soon going to be a pre-built PC that you can buy on the Overclockers website called the Magnetite. Thankfully, it's not going to be this exact build. Uh, we do have some Overclockers experts who will be able to do a better job and build that for you. But because you can buy these exact components, I did want to test how well it performs. I first went into the BIOS and I enabled resizable bar. So that's because this PC uses a Ryzen 5000 series CPU and also a Radeon 6000 series graphics card. So resizable bar is basically what AMD call smart access memory. And that's gonna give us an extra FPS performance boost in games, which is really, really important and something you definitely don't want to forget. So once I'd done that, I then ran a couple of game benchmarks and also 3D mark. And we're gonna put all those results up on the screen now. As you can see from those benchmarks, the performance from the system is awesome. I was really, really impressed how much performance you can get out of such a small PC. Also, the cooling is great. The P200A has that giant mesh front panel. So even though the system is using the stock cooler, everything stayed cool and there was no throttling whatsoever. So with the Magtite system, it's ideal for playing games at 1440p resolution. You can play pretty much everything at high graphical settings. Or if you drop down to 1080p resolution, you can get a really high refresh rate, which will give you that super smooth gameplay. So massively impressed by this case. Um, the Fantex P200A, I don't think you really need anything else if you're gonna be building an ITX system. It's got all the RGB lighting, the tempered glass side panel, and you can tell that it's really, really well thought out and it's great build quality as well. It's a really nice case to build in. If you like the video, if you like the build, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button so you catch all of our future videos. Press the bell icon so you get a notification as well. And remember to head over to the Overclockers website, take a look at the P200A and also look out for the Magnetite system which will be coming soon.